Welcome to Travel Market Life, your companion for industry insights and professional business development. Travel Market Life. Join us by webcast, video or podcast. Hello and welcome back to Travel Market Life. I'm your host, Ryan Haynes. Also joined with Christina Blanche in this episode from Open Revenue Consulting, where we're speaking to hotel executives at the annual hotel conference. In this episode, we're joined with Demetrius Manikis, the president of EMEA at Wyndham Hotels, and Paul Hernady, the executive vice president at Cedar Capital Partners, to understand what's on their minds and their focus for the coming year. Travel Market Life. Demetrius Menikis, the president of uh, Wyndham. Uh, thank you very much for being here. How are you, Demetrius? I'm very well, Christina. Thank you for inviting me. Thank <laughs> it's you. wonderful to have you. Tell us a little bit about Wyndham. What's happening at the moment? What growth opportunities are you seeing? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting times. I, I, and, you know, we've been here at the, at the AHC, AHC conference in, in Manchester, which, uh, I, as I told you earlier, it's amazing to see more people on day two than people on day one, which is which is absolutely fantastic. Nobody nobody's left. Everybody's back. Uh, in Wyndham is an interesting time for Wyndham. Um, as, as, I, as I was telling uh, some of the guys this morning, we just uh, ten days ago we acquired a 23rd brand uh, here in uh, Europe, uh, Vienna House, uh, which is going to be renamed as Vienna House by Wyndham. So this is an exciting time for us. Uh, we bought a brand that um, it actually sits uh, in, a, in a very niche market, in a, you know, kind of in the upper scale um, lifestyle segment, which is something that we really wanted to grow here in here in EMEA. It's it's a it's a brand that resonates a lot with uh, some great consumers in, in in Central Europe, and this is a brand that we're planning to to grow outside of the usual you know the usual Central European countries. We're we're going to take it all across EMEA and. Why not globally? And, and 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 what is important to us? I mean, that acquisition is just is not just about adding and you know our twenty third brand. It's it's about the, the 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 way we feel about the growth of the hospitality industry in Europe. It's a vote of confidence to to the team. It's a vote of confidence to the industry, and it's a vote of confidence for the future of hospitality in in Europe. So all in all, it's exciting times for Wyndham, and it's and it's the right time to to be here. It all sounds extremely promising for the yeah, hospitality Yeah, yeah, yeah. Industry. Look, there is, there, is a, there is many reasons. There is many reasons for us to work, right? I think the, the hospitality industry the last two and a half, three years has, has been through things that we've never, we never ever anticipated. We, we've never seen anything like it. But we are, you know, we have survived. We, we are back. There was pent up demand. Everybody, you know, you, you see what is going on. Everything is, is fully booked and, and people are eager to travel again. And yes, I can understand this inflation, this energy crisis. But there is one thing that hospitality, and this was evident uh, the last couple of days we've been talking to so many people here. There is one thing that is evident. We are an industry that likes to think about half full instead of half empty. And hospitality is the, the, the industry of optimism, of encouragement, of resilience. And we're an industry that, that you know, has been around for thousands of years and it will, it will survive in the years to come. So exciting times to be right in the center of having to address the challenges, but actually find solutions for the future as well. That's a very promising message, Dimitri. Yeah, look, you gotta be positive, right? You gotta be positive. Absolutely. <laughs> what would you say? What's what are some of the challenges that you're hoping to address this year? And what look, sort of technology is important look, to you? Technology. Look, the, 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 as I said, challenges. Everybody talks about the usual things, right? The, the labor shortages. Uh, everybody talks about energy. Everybody talks about inflation. Um, have we seen some of those before? Yes, we have. Probably the labor shortage is the one that it's 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 more. Uh, challenging for us, especially in various markets. If you go to the Middle East, for example, in the, in the Gulf, you don't. People don't talk about labor shortages because they are sitting next to a, a, a population of 1.2 billion people. So they've got there are a lot of, of of resources that they can use. On the other side, here in Europe, everybody talks about labor shortages because that's the number one problem. Technology can actually help. Um, it can actually help us automate but it won't help us make bets. 
Uh, it won't help us, you know, that smile every morning in that restaurant when you go for your breakfast or, or when you check in. Yes, there will be contactless check-ins, but, but the human element is important. So our number one objective, not just as Wyndham, I think as an industry, is bring those people back who left us and make sure that those people stay and they provide what it is hospitality's number one focus, service. Absolutely. And would you say your revenue strategy has changed considerably over the past year? Yes. I mean, I don't think there is any strategy that hasn't changed. The last two and a half years, we learned how to be agile. We, we learned how to adapt almost daily. And our revenue management, our commercial strategy, there were segments of the market that we had to let go and focus in others. But the, the promising thing, and again, the positive thing is that, for example, look at business travel. A lot of people spoke about business travel or business travel is not going to happen. Actually, the numbers, they don't speak against that. You have, you have people traveling, business people traveling. It's just a different way. They do it in a different way. They can stay for a couple of days and enjoy the local, um, the, you know, the local destination. Uh, people don't go to the office that often, but they do get together as teams and they go to a hotel to have a fun evening out or, or do a team meeting. So I think we need to adapt, read the signs of what is happening in the industry and adapt our commercial and revenue strategy to address those changes. Big time, big time. And we've heard about the conundrum of sustainability in all these various sessions here yep. today at AHC. We know how paramount it is, both for consumers who really have a preference to make their stay a lot more sustainable, but also for, for the owners and operators of hotels. What sort of initiatives are you addressing in terms of sustainability? Sustainability is not new for us, right? We, uh, Wyndham, uh, although we are a franchise model, for us it's all about education. So we've been trying to educate uh, our thousands of franchisee owners around the world why sustainability is important, why they need to, to care more about what we're going to leave our kids the next day. And, and talking about kids, I think there, there's one, one lesson that I've learned recently from our one of our franchise partners in India. And, uh, He's doing a major renovation. He's using, um, you know, green energy, and he's, he's implementing technology for food waste. And I said, why? Why do you do it now? Why now? You know, you you, you went through the pandemic. You have a challenge with, uh, you know, cash flow. Why are you making this huge investment? And he said, I don't do it for you, and I don't do it for me. I'm doing it for my kids. And I'm like, what? What exactly do you mean? He said, in our dinner table. My kids are asking me, my, my, my teenage uh, kids are asking me, Dad, you're a business owner, what are you doing to leave us and, 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 and leave us a better place to live? What are you doing to be more sustainable and what are you doing to address some of the challenges that your industry, the hospitality industry, is actually creating every day? And we can talk about, as I said, energy, food waste and so forth, water consumption. That was, that was an eye-opener for me. You know what? You don't do it because you have to. You do it because it's it's good for your own kids. And and that's what he told me. And I think that was a great message. And it's a great message for all of us. Sustainability is not just a word. It's not a strategy. It's not a policy. It's it's a must because we need to leave this world in a better place tomorrow. That's what it's all about. Such an important message. Thank you very much. Uh, Dimitris, why would you say Hospitality Marketplace is an event to be watched by our hotel sector? Because you guys bring together some interesting people. You bring some interesting ideas. You bring people that they are going to talk about technology. You bring people... You know, the, the, the more technology, the more we become... Uh, um, you know, we communicate in so many different ways, right? But at the same time, we become more lonely. Although we communicate more, we are actually becoming lonely and lonely and lonely. So, bringing using platforms that bring people together to have a dialogue and a debate, I think it's 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 a fantastic opportunity. You know, I I, I look at my phone. I've got five apps that I communicate with the world, and and I'm lonely. I'm more lonely today than I, I've ever been. My kids, you know, my kids communicate with me on WhatsApp. They don't talk to me anymore. And although I do communicate more, I'm actually more lonely. And if you have platforms and ways to bring people together, to me, that's a success. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Thanks. Hello, 
um, I'm here today with uh, Paul Harnady, the Executive Vice President of Cedar Court Capital Partners. Paul, how are you? Thank you very much for uh, being with us today. Very well, Christina. Thank you very much. So, Paul, we'd love to get your view on how the macroeconomic landscape is um, has been impacting you uh, for the past few months, if not year, um, and how particularly you know, inflation and energy rates and labor shortage has had uh, uh, an impact into your pricing strategy, into your business mix. What are you seeing? Yeah, well, I think that it's, it's been an interesting and turbulent time, right? We've got uh, rising prices uh, across the board, uh, from food to energy being the two big, the big ones that uh, are well publicized. Uh, I think, fortunately, if we're talking about it from two Two, two angles. The markets and the demand have been really, really strong. So naturally, pricing has followed suit. So pricing, uh, an average rate uh, across all the markets in which we operate, which are across Europe and indeed the US, have remained and uh, remain strong and grown, which is is helpful in offsetting those cost increases. Um, does it offset them a hundred percent? It probably neutralizes them, but it, the businesses are not becoming any more profitable because of the growth in rate. The growth in rate is very welcome, and, it, and it, as we say, it is as a result of the demand in the market, and long may that demand continue. We've obviously seen, as we know, as we've come out of the pandemic, huge demand for leisure travel. Corporate travel has most definitely returned, and has returned strong. The gap in the market is still the bigger groups, so that's group travel and meetings and events, which you know has formed a large part of our business historically. Um, so it's it's when will that come back? Will that come back to the same levels as 19 and before? And whether that will continue to drive price? On the reverse of that, you've got all the inflationary costs. So of course you've got costs going up across the board mainly all driven by the utility impact. So the utility impact is having an impact on our laundry, our linen, our food supply chain. So we've seen anything upwards of 25% increase in laundry rates. Of course, utilities has gone up, you know, triple digit in some cases. Uh, in a number of the European markets, you can't actually contract your utilities. So you go on a day by day pricing, which is a bit like going to the casino. You know, you don't know what your bill's going to be at the end of the month because you don't know what your 31 different days of pricing has been in utilities. So, you know, it's a real challenge and we are in a fortunate position that rates and demand are still allowing us to offset those costs. At some point, the gap will narrow and I fear that some businesses will start to see profit erosion. I think on that note, um what are the main KPIs that you focus on right now and how, they, how, how have those changed? Um, I think, as always, rooms is the biggest driver of profitability within the hotel business. So Revcar, ADR and occupancy remain the first three things you look at whenever you're reviewing a P&L or a, a, a KPI schedule. But more and more, particularly for our style of business, we're looking at Trevpar, where you've got businesses that are multifaceted, so they've got spas, golf, leisure, you know, good quality food and beverage outlets. It's important to understand the whole spend. So Trevpar is becoming very, very important for us. We've always looked at it. It's not new, but I think it's become more and more pertinent, particularly to our businesses that we operate. You know, we've got a large golf resort that from a red Park perspective, may not be leading the way, but because of the way we approach all of the other ancillary spends and all the other services, from a Trevpar perspective, it's absolutely head and shoulders above its competitors. So Trevpar is coming uh, to the fore as being probably the second biggest measurement after, after Revpar from a revenue perspective. I think given the guest has more choice, given that they are paying more for the services naturally with the increases in the demand, that customer data is more important than it was before. 
if it, it was vitally important before, but in terms of build, building loyalty, uh, in terms of delivering to that guest expectation, things like um, the scores that you get through, things like Revenate or Review Pro are really, really useful. One, because they tell you how you're doing and what your customer thinks, but they also tell you how you're doing against your competitors. And it's always important to stay ahead of what your competitors are doing from a, from a guest perspective. And then, naturally, on the basis of what I've just said about cost base, you've obviously got things like cost per kilowatt hour, and so there's more and more utility or cost KPIs that are in laser focus now, purely because we've seen those cost rises. Um, and if you were to um, um, to focus on some of the technologies that help you grow your business, where's that focus going? I think, look, technology plays a huge part across the board in our businesses. We're seeing it more and more so in terms of the control of usage, in terms of energy and utilities. But if I come back to a point I made earlier about Revpar still being the single biggest measure in the business because Rooms delivers the maximum profitability within the P&L of a hospitality business, then I'd have to say our revenue management systems continue to be the number one system. That's brilliant. Just before we go, Paul, tell us, what do you think uh, Hospitality Marketplace is a valuable event for the uh, hoteliers that are sitting there watching it? I think uh, what I find extremely valuable is sharing views, understanding how other experience and knowledge of the people within the industry are seeing things. You know, I think we are better collectively. Of course, we're all, we're all competitors in this world, right? Uh, be it supply chain or the actual hospitality businesses, but we can still continue to learn from each other. So hearing those insights, hearing how other people are, are measuring and focusing on their business is really, really helpful. Thank you ever so much, Paul. No problem, thanks. For more, go to Travel Market Life. The music sensation by Zach Nelson is reproduced under license from Storyblocks. Travel Market Life is a Haynes Marcoms digital marketing agency production serving the travel and technology industries.